sometimes people make mods that just feel like magic, and that's what this is. So check this out. Uh, if I pan the camera right now, it looks like an absolute blurry mess. And this is because this game, I've happened to select Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, but I want to be clear, this can apply to so many games, not just this one. And while right now I'm highlighting a use case for an AMD graphics card, there are uses here for NVIDIA users as well. But what I want you to notice is if you look at, uh, as I pan this camera, Cloud's face looks so blurry, his hair looks so pixelated, and the stuff flying around behind him, behind him especially if you look at stuff uh, disocluded by, by his motion, looks extremely pixelated. Now what's going on here? That's because this game really doesn't support any decent upscalers besides DLSS. Uh, so if you don't have a compatible graphics card, it kind of seems like you're you're doomed if you're trying to upscale. Now, I'm doing an aggressive upscale here using the only thing that's available here for me, which is TAAU, uh, an old-fashioned kind of uh, TAA-based upscaler. It's not great. Um, now, I'm on an AMD card here, so normally I wouldn't be able to even see, let alone select, this DLSS option. So what is that all about? Well, I'm able to select it, because I'm using OptiScaler right now. But I want to be clear, because I'm on AMD hardware, I'm not actually using DLSS now. But what I've done is I have intercepted the outputs that the game sends to DLSS, and it is now running them through whatever upscaler I choose. And I chose to run it through an FSR pathway, uh, but because I'm on an AMD 9000 series card right now, I'm on a 9070 XT, I even have access to FSR 4. So I can set this to run the FSR 4 algorithm. And I want to be clear, this has use cases even if you're not on an AMD GPU or an AMD 9000 series G uh, GPU specifically. But I do think that this is the most interesting and most exciting case for it because there are so many games that don't support FSR 4 but would highly benefit from them. I'm gonna do that same camera pan now, and I really want you to notice how much more clear like Cloud's face is in motion, like his eyes, uh, his hair. Again, we're still on a 50%, in other words, a performance mode upscaling with a 1440p output. So I'm not saying this, this uh, you know, is a perfect reconstruction. This is an extremely aggressive upscale to prove a point. Um, but notice like his sword. We're not seeing the heavy ghosting trails of the sword behind it. Stuff is still a little pixelated in motion, but so much better. So again, what are we doing here? We are intercepting uh, the game's inputs that would normally go to DLSS, but since we're not on a DLSS compatible device, we are upgrading it or at least swapping it over uh, into something that is compatible with the graphics card and again, using OptiScaler. I'm pressing the insert button to get this to pop up. Um, now, there's some other really cool stuff I wanna tell you about today. Some of my viewers may know that I still teach math full time in addition to running this YouTube channel. I love teaching, but the hardest part of teaching isn't delivering clear information, it's keeping the students interested and engaged, which is why I absolutely love and highly recommend today's sponsor, Boot.dev, for anyone looking to learn backend web development from start to finish in Python, Go, SQL, and more. Boot.dev uses tactics learned from modern game design like XP, levels, achievements, quests, and global leaderboards to combat boredom and keep you motivated and moving forward to your goal. But in addition to the gamified systems to improve motivation, Boot.dev is also designed around how people actually learn, with a focus on writing a lot of code and building real projects. Also, their AI wizard bear Boots is trained on each lesson to help you if you are stuck, but he doesn't just feed you answers. He uses the Socratic teaching method, asking you questions to deepen your understanding. According to Stack Overflow, the median salary for a back-end developer in the U.S. in 2024 was over $100,000. So level up your earning potential with Boot.dev, and they stand behind their product with a 30-day no-questions-asked refund policy and a free demo of the interactive experience on every course. Go to Boot.dev and try out the courses for free. Then use my code DANIELOWEN to get 25% off your entire entire first year if you choose the annual plan. So how do we install this anyway? Well, let's take a look. So first, you have to go to the GitHub page for the project. I will link this in the video description. And what's nice here is there are pretty easy to read instructions and in explaining what's going on with all of this. Uh, again, including 
what exactly is this for and, and what does it do? So basically the idea here is that it would be amazing if every single game supported every single compatible upscaler. But the unfortunate situation is there's a lot of games that maybe have DLSS, but it's not the latest version of DLSS. Or they have XESS, but they don't have FSR. They have FSR, but they don't have XESS. Or they have DLSS, but they don't have XESS or FSR. They have FSR, but they don't have DLSS. The point is, Oftentimes, you are unable to select the best and most updated version of the uh, upscaling technique that's best for your graphics card, and but the game might support at least one of those. And that's what we need here. If the game supports at least one of these, uh, the game can send inputs into whichever one it supports, but the Optiscaler program can intercept those and then run them through the one that you would actually want to be using. Uh, whether that's FSR 3, FSR 4, XESS, uh, or even convert like FSR into DLSS for the games that support FSR but not DLSS. So again, like I said, this is use cases well beyond just AMD 9000 series users. Also, some games don't support frame generation or don't support the version of frame generation your GPU uh, uses. For example, you might be on an NVIDIA 2000 or 3000 series card, which doesn't support NVIDIA's frame generation, but they do support AMD's frame generation, but the game might not offer AMD frame generation, or if it's an older version of FSR in the game, you might not be able to use DLSS upscaling along with FSR's frame generation. Well, Optiscaler, again, can intercept whatever the game has and convert it into uh, something else. So for example, uh, you could be using a DLSS upscaler, but then use FSR frame generation on like an, uh, if you have like an RTX 3060, that type of thing, which is pretty cool. Also, there's even some uh, attempt here to add in latency reduction technologies um, like maybe a game supports uh, NVIDIA's Reflex, but maybe you have uh, in AMD GPU, well, how about we convert that into anti-lag too? So this is very cool. And I, while I think it's most useful for AMD users to convert uh, DLSS into the latest version of FSR, and especially AMD 9000 series users, like I said, there's a ton of use cases here for a lot of uh, popular graphics cards, including NVIDIA graphics cards here, which is really cool. Now, there is some, uh, some issues here with support. Um, now, for example, let's say you want to see the FSR4 compatibility list. Uh, well, there's going to be some issues here. For example, FSR4 on Windows does not seem to support Vulkan yet. Um, and so uh, you do have that kind of a problem. So if the game runs in Vulkan, like uh, Doom the Dark Ages, for example, you can't put FSR4 into Doom the Dark Ages because that's running on Vulkan. However, games that are DX11 or DX12, uh, you can usually get this up and running. But again, there can be some compatibility issues. Also, I've seen some Linux games getting FSR4 running in uh, Vulkan games, uh, whereas that doesn't seem to be working on um, Windows, but I'm not super into Linux myself, so I'm just gonna let you know that you might have additional uh, luck there uh, that I didn't. So in general, uh, what, al what also is really cool here is the support list. So uh, if I scroll down through here, what you'll see is the game name and whether it supports FSR4 on Windows, or you might see a check mark by Linux, and then it says which input to use. So if the game, let's say, supports uh, a DLSS or, and FSR, but you want to convert it into FSR4, this will tell you sh which pathway should you be going down, right? And sometimes there's some notes about compatibility, right? Because this is not officially implemented into the game. Sometimes there can be some small issues with compatibility or little graphics bugs or crashes. Now, as I'm scrolling through the compatible games, um, what I want to make sure you guys understand though is that you should not be doing this in online multiplayer games with anti-cheat programs because you will be modifying game files in order to get this to work. And because you're modifying game files, it means that you could end up getting uh, triggering an anti-cheat program, getting banned, that type of thing. It's unfortunate, but that just is the reality of the situation. So uh, you might wanna, uh, if you're somebody living on the edge and trying it out, just don't say, I didn't warn you, and the developers do put up a big flag saying that you should not do this 
in online games. But what do I mean by you're modifying game files and what should, should you be doing anyway in order to get this running? Let's uh, scroll a little quick to the end here. Okay, so how do you actually get this, get this going? Well, there is a fairly automated install process. Uh, it looks more complicated than it is, okay? So first of all, you download the latest build of Octascaler. Again, I will link this in my video description. And uh, then that's really, <laughs> like, there's not a lot to it. You just need to put, the, put this into whichever game you want to use it in. And again, you can check that compatibility list to see what, what notes people may have said about the process of using it there. Uh, so, for example, on an Unreal Engine game like Final Fantasy VII Rebirth that I was uh, using here, uh, you generally follow path to the game, game or project name, binaries, Win64, uh, or WinGDK, and ignore the engine folder. So, let me give an example of this where I've already installed it. So, I'm going to go to my... Um, uh, my Steam Apps folder, whichever drive that's on, and then go to Common, and then I see a list of my Steam games. I'm going to Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Now, here's the place where it'd be very easy to make a mistake, because I will see in this initial folder that it says Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, uh, and that's an EXE, like that looks like it would run the program. So this seems like, if you're not careful, where you should be extracting the files. But it's not, and then remember it said ignore the engine folder, so I'm gonna go to End, uh, I'm going to go to binaries, Win64, and then I found a Final Fantasy VII Rebirth application here. Uh, and this is where I then extracted the Optiscaler files. So what you'll get is this. When you download it, you'll get the uh, zipped file here with these files inside of it. What you'll want to do is extract these files into this folder. And once you've extracted them, you then have to run a batch file. Um, which is uh, going to then rename some stuff uh, to in, or, uh, in order to get it to work. It's the optiscaler setup.bat. So you run the .bat installation uh, file. Uh, you answer a couple of prompts regarding naming things. And then again, if you do want to use an AMD or Intel GPU to get DLSS inputs, you need to select yes uh, when it asks you if you want to uh, be able to do that. Again, the instructions here are very clear. Uh, follow along should be able to get it going, and I'm sure you can uh, ask for help regarding Optiscaler on various forums or the comment section here, whatever you need to, to get it up and running. Uh, once you've done that, I mean, that really is pretty much it uh, in the games where it is supported. Again, I want to be clear, this does not support absolutely every game without issues. So once you have it installed in the game, you press the insert key uh, on your keyboard and it pops up this menu. This is the Optiscaler menu and then you can support which kind of uh, upscaler you want to be using. But again, uh, you do need to note that if you're doing this by uh, intercepting the calls for a certain uh, upscaler initially, you have to be, ha be set to that in the graphics menu. Uh, so for example, here in uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, when I'm on the TAA or TAAU pathway, it's not intercepting the DLSS calls, so I'm still using the um, somewhat terrible upscaler that it uh, initially supported here. So we're using the uh, very blurry TAAU upscaler uh, as I run around here right now. Oh man, look at the foliage in the background right now. That is just, oh man, does not look good. Right? <laughs> look as I pan back and forth on that. Uh, so again, uh, if I try to press the insert key right now, it's not gonna be actually intercepting this uh, because it's set to that TAAU pathway. So this is where I then go into the DLSS pathway and it should be able to intercept it, right? So I go back to DLSS and now by selecting DLSS in the menu, it's uh, Optiscaler is now intercepting those DLSS inputs. I press the insert key and now I can change uh, uh, that DLSS into whatever I want it to be. Now, if I'm on a, not on a 9000 series AMD GPU, um, maybe I want to convert into XCSS, for example. Well, great, I can do that. Switch over to XCSS pathway, hit apply. Now I'm on XCSS settings, um, uh, which is pretty cool. And you can uh, adjust a few different uh, advanced features here and things like that, which are very cool. And uh, here we go. So XCSS 
is at least going to be better than the default TAAU, and this would be useful for any AMD card that's not a 9000 series uh, with FSR4 support. But again, because I'm on uh, a card with FSR4 support, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the FSR. This was a little confusing. I went to the 3.x pathway, clicked apply, and then it, it's uh, in the FSR settings, it allows me to, uh, to choose FSR 4.0.1 right here. So that seemed a little bit confusing to me initially, uh, but once you see how that works, it, it isn't too bad. And then look at how much better that looks. So like I said, there are tons of games supported, and um, but not every single game do check this out. And like I said, there's use cases here for AMD GPUs, uh, for for uh, NVIDIA GPUs, for Intel GPUs, all sorts of stuff. And like I said, uh, this I think is especially good for the 9000 year, uh, series AMD cards, where FSR4 is awesome, but the game support list is not. <laughs> so um, this really solves that problem. Uh, at least for many single player titles, which is really good to see. Let me know what you guys have uh, experienced with this in the comment section. I absolutely love this. Um, and uh, I hope all of you have an excellent day. Don't forget to go to boot.dev and try out the courses for free. Then use my code Daniel Owen to get 25% off your entire first year if you choose the annual plan.